America the Dead Survivor Stories Podcast. Copyright 2019. W.G. Sweet. All rights foreign and domestic, reserved in their entirety. Legal. This is a work of fiction. Any names, characters, places, or incidents depicted are products of the author's imagination. Any resemblance to actual living persons, places, situations, or events is purely coincidental. 3. Journals and Diaries, Mike, March 8th. I debated with myself how to start this. Isn't that stupid? Not whether I should start it. I guess that means that I have some hope that I am not the only one left. Actually, I know that I am not the only one. I've heard gunshots more than once. I've heard a dog barking as well. And I've seen several cats, dogs, squirrels, etc. I've also heard what sounded like a car or a truck, but I couldn't figure it out where it was coming from. Everything is so quiet. It could be anywhere. The sound of the river drowns things out, too. Even so, I haven't seen any other people. None. And I'm getting ahead of myself again. I have no idea what has happened, even here in this town. It doesn't really matter, either, except to tell you, whoever you may end up being, what happened from my point of view, I guess. Maybe it's the same for you. Maybe writing this out is a waste of time, but it keeps my mind off shit, you know? So, I wondered where to start. Today, last week, just start, I guess. I have heat, food, and fire. And I've finally gotten myself moved into this cave, so my mind is more at ease. But again, I'm getting ahead of myself. It started for me last week on the 2nd of March. Only six days, but everything here has changed. I was having a few beers, watching the coverage of the World Countdown Party. Hey, it was supposed to be a joke, right? And supposedly we had a few months to go. It was supposed to be one big, long countdown party. And the meteor was supposed to miss. But one minute everything was fine, and the next the power was out. Then the first quake hit. I made it through that night, and two more quakes? Aftershocks? Who knows? I was just trying to get through till morning. The phones were out. Sirens everywhere. No power. But the closer it got to dawn, the less noise there was. The sirens fell off, the rain started hard, and then the lightning came. A thunder and lightning storm in the middle of winter. It was spooky. And when morning finally came, it didn't make much sense at all. Almost everything I could see in every direction was flattened. The streets had cracked open and had become rivers. The temperature was higher than it should have been. But that didn't last. By noon, the rain stopped, and I kept expecting to see someone. Emergency workers, power company, somebody, even a neighbor, but I saw no one at all that day. I guess as serious as it was, I wasn't taking it seriously, at least not that first day. I was still thinking rescue, help, it's on the way. This is the most powerful country in the entire world. Help is coming. So I sat on my ass and drank beer and ate bologna sandwiches and chips and stared out at the street from my front porch, which was perched on the edge of a 20-foot rain gully. Just before dark, the real quake hit. It had to have been stronger than the previous ones. It felt like it anyway. I barely jumped off the porch before it fell into the gully. It scared the hell out of me. It wasn't long after that when darkness settled in and I knew I was in trouble. Something in the whole structure of the house was damaged. Every aftershock made it dance, sway around me. It was almost now a two-foot drop down to the ground since my porch was gone. And I didn't dare leave because I had no idea what it was like outside. No street lights, no moon, no starlight, no starlight, none. Then the storm came back, and the air turned cold. Every time the lightning flashed, I could see the street. 
or what had been a street. There really was no more street. It was a river now, wide, and it looked pretty deep. All the opposite side of the street was gone. No houses, cars, telephone poles, satellite dishes, nothing. It seemed like the entire side of the street had washed right away down into the river. The water roared past me just a few feet from where my porch had been, flattened out and then turned into rapids, breaking away to crash into the Black River farther down the hill. That was when I realized it wasn't just the other side of the street that was gone. The other two blocks that had been between me and the river were also gone. Later on the rain turned to snow, but the lightning kept up. Lightning in a snowstorm. How crazy is that? But by the morning of March 4th, the river running past my house was down to a trickle, and the snow began piling up. Down the hill, the black was over her banks. There was nothing else to see. A few solitary houses still standing, as my own was, but there was no one around anywhere. That's when I get into the hard stuff. I drank myself to sleep, and when I woke up, I'd lost several hours. My watch still worked at that point. When I walked to the front door, the first thing I noticed was footprints in the snow. Three sets, two small, maybe kids or women, one big, going just past my house, no more than three feet from my house, where once upon a time in some other world, my porch had been and I had slept through it. I yelled and screamed for a half hour hoping that someone would hear me, but no one came. No one yelled back and told me to shut up either. Just absolute silence. No birds, just the roar of the swollen black. Nothing else. I thought about that day, the fourth, a couple of times. Was it the fourth? The fifth? Did I sleep more than a few hours? I don't know. And that was the day my watch stopped working, so I don't know. One minute it was working, and the next it wasn't. The face was blank. There were a couple of more aftershocks that day, and I began to wonder if my house would be standing much longer. After all, nearly everything around me was destroyed already. And, I thought, what if that was an aftershock? Like I had thought the first quake was a real one, and then the one the next day was so much stronger. It made me realize how stupid I was to still be in that house. And, I thought, no wonder no one is answering when I yell. They were all smart enough to get away from the buildings, leave. And if I left also, I reasoned, I'd most likely catch up to them, whoever they were, wherever they had gone. That was when I glanced at my watch and noticed that it stopped working. I had been in the habit of looking at my watch all day. Just nervous, I guess. I was positive that I had just looked at it and it had been working. But when had that been? What time had it been? And when had it been that I had looked at it? How long ago? All I could remember for sure was that the last aftershock that had started me wondering had been at 2.57 p.m. I wasn't sure of anything after that. Even when I thought back on it later, wondering what day it was, I wondered why I had never thought to push the little date button to see what the date had been. Or had I? Had I, and then forgotten that I had? Had I only remembered subconsciously that it was the fourth? Anyway, the watch was dead. And what time was it? And where should I go? And how soon would it be dark? After wasting time wondering about things like that, things that were absolute bullshit in light of everything else, I just jumped down into the snow and headed off towards downtown. There were a few buildings standing in that direction. It was still snowing pretty hard, but I could see the outlines of the buildings through the snow. There were planes overhead in the night. I know that sounds crazy, but I woke to hear them. There was a strange smell in the air too, and I was thinking in my dream, maybe in my dream or maybe awake. Anyway, I was thinking crop dusters like they were crop dusting, spraying something. It was weird, except now I could see traces of blue powder, something on the snow, and it made me remember the dream.
but I pushed it away and walked. Too much to see and comprehend as it was, without worrying about bad dreams. Normally it's no more than a 15 minute walk to the square. Watertown has an old New England style public square that is the center of downtown. I figured that if anyone was still alive, that was where they would be. In fact, I told myself, they probably would have some buildings open for shelter. Fire departments should be passing out blankets, bottled water, hot soup. I could see it so clearly in my head. I was wrong, of course, but that's a story for tomorrow. My fingers are shot. Hey, it would be easy to write this on my computer keyboard, but computers are a thing of the past now. I'm warm, I'm dry, I'm pretty much okay. I survived the day the world ended, but my fingers are sore and I'm tired, so I'll pick this up tomorrow. Candace, March 8th. Fresh snow today. The whole world is covered in clean, white snow. It makes it look like nothing ever happened here. I'm with a man named Tom. He's crazy about me and I just can't feel the same. I could fake it, but I told myself I'm not going to do that. But I can't keep on this way either. It's too hard on him, too hard on me. Bob and Jan Dove are also with us. I don't know what I would do without Jan. She's level-headed where I'm impulsive, a thinker where I tend to just act, a good balance. Bob has an idea of rebuilding his people's lands. He's Native American, and so is Jan. It sounded crazy when he first said it, but after I thought about it, it began to make sense to me. Lydia is the other member of our party. She hates me. That's because Tom wants me and she wants Tom. Maybe that will fix itself before I have to fix it by leaving and going out on my own. Today we decided to see if the city was any better on the other side of the river. It isn't. We crossed the river, the Black River, on a railroad trestle. There is a traffic bridge, and it looks passable, but it's clogged with cars, and some of those cars look purposely placed to block it off. That really creeped me out. We walked across the trestle carefully and went up State Street. There's a store there, a supermarket, and we found tracks in the snow. One person, a man I would guess from the boot tread. I can't tell you what that was like, seeing the footprint left by somebody else someone else alive in this whole mess. I felt immediately connected to him. I can't say it or explain it any better than that. Like a connection existed forever and I only had to find it. I tried to explain it to Lydia but she just shrugged. We have this thing with Tom between us though. She wants him, he wants me, I don't want him. It could be so goddamn simple but it isn't. Except the footprints. Maybe the footprints are the answer. I think they are. I believe they are. We just need to find the person, the man, that goes with those footprints and... And I don't know. I really don't. But I think he'll know. The one bad thing today, we came across the dead man lying crumpled by the side of the road. I could have sworn he moved, so I hurried to him, but as I got closer, I could see that he was dead long dead. We stood for a moment and then walked on. But later when we came back, he was gone. And I thought, was he dead? Was he? But I know that he was. I suppose that wild dogs or something got him. We didn't talk about it, but it bothered all of us. Mike, March 9th. Maybe it's March 9th. I guess I really don't know. But that's what I think it is. So that's what I'm going with. It's late. I spent today getting food, canned stuff mostly. It was rough. Almost everything is flattened, and what isn't flattened is badly damaged. I spent about five hours a few days ago digging my way into a supermarket on State Street. The roof was down but held up by the tops of the aisle stacks, so I was able to make my way through. I just had to be careful of broken glass. That was where I went back to today. I had no flashlight at first, but I managed to get a small flashlight and batteries. 
I had to take so much stuff out of the front area of the store that all the impulse stuff they sell was right there. Candy, little radios, and of course flashlights and batteries. I tried a small portable radio, nothing but static on the AM and FM bands both. I brought it back with me along with some extra batteries. I listened to it a short while ago. Still nothing. Maybe tomorrow. I spent the entire day at the supermarket digging out canned goods and bringing them back here. Here is the cave. This cave is down in back of the square, downtown as it's called here. I knew about it from growing up here. It used to be bricked up. The quake took care of that though. I was worried about the cave itself collapsing, but it seems to be fine. It's only about a mile and a half from here to the supermarket, but with no vehicle it's slow going. I've been piling stuff up on a large sled and making trips back and forth. I found several cars and trucks, snowmobiles, but none of them will run. Most of them have no juice, but even the ones that do just turn over but won't fire. Maybe if I was a mechanic I could do something, but I'm not. So. It's the sled and a lot of muscle work. I did notice today, after not going there for two days, that no one else had been there either. No tracks in the fresh snow. It's depressing. No way can I be the only freaking guy here, right? And that made me wonder, what the hell am I writing this for? I mean, if there's no one left, who will read it? I guess those are questions for another day. Another day because truly I don't want to deal with them today. So I spent my day getting food. There are maybe two dozen buildings still standing downtown, but that's where I was when I left off writing yesterday, heading for downtown, so I'll pick it up from there. When I got downtown, there was no one there, only the handful of buildings standing as I mentioned, and two of those went down a short time later from an aftershock. The police department? Gone. The fire department out Washington Street? Gone. I know. I walked out there. Ditto the high school, all the old houses where the rich people live, the newspaper, the museum. Really, it's all gone. There are some tracks in the snow, but how old were they? I couldn't tell. And I couldn't tell where they were headed either. I got pretty down about it and ended up walking back down to the square and then down towards the river and back of the square. There was a porn shop, still there. It seemed like the filthiest place I'd ever seen. I mean, why would a place like that still be there, still be standing, when almost nothing else was? Is that a statement or what? Hey, maybe it is. But since I was down that far, I thought I'd take a look at the river, and that made me think about the cave. This whole area is limestone, caves everywhere. This one just happened to be a big one. It wasn't hard to find it. It's on an old abandoned road below the level of the square, but a good hundred feet or so above the level of the river. All the brickwork that had once closed it off had fallen. The cave itself seemed okay. Some rock had come down from the ceiling, but not much. Most of the rock laying around looked pretty old like it had been there for some time. Given the buildings, which were still falling, or the cave, I chose the cave. It just seemed to make more sense. It's quite deep. I have no idea how deep it goes, and no inclination to follow it and see. The front area is huge and dry, more room than I could ever use, so there's no need for me to go into that darkness and find out how deep it does go. And that's funny, isn't it? What is it that I'll need, might need, could need? I don't know. I do know I won't be spending the rest of my life living in a cave, that's for sure. But it's winter. I have to stay somewhere for the next few months. Then maybe when spring comes, I'll head south if no one shows up to rescue me. I guess it would be me. There's no one else here. It shouldn't be that way, though. There has to be more than me. I spent the balance of the afternoon looking around. I walked all the way out to Arsenal Street as well as Washington Street. The mall, or most of it, has collapsed. But I should be able to get some stuff out of it. The interstate is car wrecks and bodies everywhere. 
I could see it from the overpass. I didn't feel a need to go down there and see it in person. I didn't want to. I haven't really seen many bodies. Some at the mall, some at the supermarket, a few others here and there, but there was so much ground, houses, things missing, that I think the other people just got swallowed up by the quake. There's a lot of raw earth. Most of the streets are messed up. The interstate is like that in places. What I can see, anyway, but close to Arsenal Street, it's all wrecks and bodies, wrecked and burned vehicles, and it smells horrible. I could smell it long before I came up on the overpass. I've decided it will take a lot to get me to go back out Arsenal Street again. The supermarket has that smell also, and I found two people up by the checkouts when I first dug it out, but none since then as I've dug out other parts of the store. Maybe it's the meat department at the back of the store that smells like that. I spent most of the next day wandering around trying to start cars and trucks, calling out to the people I hoped were there. Nothing. I heard something that sounded like an engine running, but it came and went on the wind, and I couldn't tell where it had come from. But I took that as a good sign. It has to be someone, right? I can't imagine being left here alone. I tried to start new cars, old cars, new trucks, you name it. None of them do anything except turn over. But at least their batteries are working, and it seemed as though they weren't the other day. That was also the day that the daylight seemed to last way too long. My watch wasn't working, so I can't say for sure, but the sun just seemed to hang in the sky all day. Then it seemed to sink in the wrong direction once it did set, and I was sick all day my stomach, and I was lightheaded. The night lasted a long time too, and the sun came back up in the wrong place, unless my sense of direction is off. Maybe it is. In any case, I don't know what happened. Maybe it was the earthquakes? I don't know. It could have been, but it doesn't seem possible. The end of the world books were saying the earth would stop and then run backwards. Maybe it did. But I didn't feel weightlessness if it did, or at least I don't think so. But I thought about the vehicles, magnetic poles. Maybe because everything is electronic now, they can't work. I don't know. It's just an idea. But I'm thinking I'll look for an older vehicle to try out my theory on. Like I said, I wish I were a mechanic, and then I'd know for sure. I spent a lot of time clearing out the rock and broken bricks in this cave bringing food in, and even some chairs, blankets, things like that. I've collected a lot of firewood and every butane lighter I could find. Paper plates, plastic forks and spoons, and man oh man, coffee. I found a small metal coffee pot in an aisle with some camping gear. It works pretty damn well too. I got some heavy duty pots and pans there also. All of that over the last few days, but still, no other people. It makes me wonder about the tracks that went past my house. Where did they go? Where is there to go? I turn the radio on every once in a while, but nothing. Even so, I'm keeping my attitude upbeat, positive. There has to be other people. Doesn't that just make sense? And winter can't last much past May, and then it will be time to get out of here. Hopefully with other people. About the author. I was born in New York. I wrote my first fiction at age 17. I drove a taxi and worked as a carpenter for most of my life. I began working on the internet in 1989 in HTML, graphics, website design. I spent time living on the streets in Rochester as a young teen and as an addict. I also spent time in prison. I was honorably discharged from the U.S. Navy in 1974. I'm a musician, I write my own music as well as lyrics, and I'm an artist. I've written more than 20 books in the Earth Survivor series and several George stories. If you would like to keep up to date on the series, please hit the subscribe button and notifications. Thanks for joining in. See you next week.